So check it out. Here I'm in uh, Tokyo, Japan. It's actually been 19 years since I came here last. I am Japanese, I grew up coming here a lot. I remember it being fun coming here as a kid. I came here with Dylan and my friend Michael, but now coming here as an adult, I just appreciate so much more. Now in the spirit of filling all this in nostalgia, one of the things I've been seeing a lot here are film camera stores, like vintage cameras. And uh, I've actually never shot film. I was around it quite a bit as a kid because my dad's a photographer and he always had them laying around and I might've like snapped the shot or to with it, but I've never really gone through the whole process of having a film camera, feeding the film in, and then like developing it and all that stuff. So uh, I kind of want to try that while I'm here. I have this buddy Shota who used to live here and he used to shoot film. So I hit him up to see what he recommends for a camera. And it turns out he's in Tokyo also. Shota-san. Hey, why do you shoot film when there's digital sensors? The shooting film uh -huh. is completely different because you just don't like really burst shooting yeah. and then just get like whatever you can capture, yeah. but you actually focus and then capture the moment. Will you help me pick out my first film camera? Let's do it. Okay. There's a store called Second Base and they've got film cameras here. They have like amazing selection. I'm thinking something just basic. Just like to get it. going, yeah. yeah. How old are these cameras? 1964, the year of Tokyo Olympics. Oh really? Seems I don't cool. really know what I'm looking at, but it's, <laughs> yeah, looks cool, feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds nice. I mean, I like it. Let's just start with this. Now I just need some film, right? That's cool having all these samples in here. Huge shout out to the staff, by the way. It definitely makes the whole process a lot easier when you're with people that know what they're talking about. The process is pretty straightforward from loading the film to getting everything set up and ready to go. But you definitely don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah, simple enough. Capsule toy. Oh, it's like a surprise roll? That's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. I kind of want to do it. Black and white. I love how there's vending machines for everything out here. So if you don't want to talk to people uh -huh. and want to purchase some weird stuff, then <laughs> you can basically get it. <laughs> so you really have to commit to a lot with film. You can't just like take one shot and then change the ISO and then take another shot and then change the white balance. Oh, take this out. <laughs> Tokyo is such a fun spot. It's like when you have film, it's like you don't want to waste it. You know, it's like every shot is precious. Yeah, you kind of have to waste yeah. some of the rolls and yeah. figure it out right. what type of setting you like. Three, two, one. I take a photo with film. <laughs> I'm like trying to review the shot right now. It's like, oh wait, I gotta wait. You're time. looking forward to seeing the photos that you took. Yeah. Sometimes you get disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> but just one photo yeah. just comes out perfectly that you imagine huh. that it's makes like, your day. What would you recommend to people who came to Japan for the first time? <laughs> Drink on the street. <laughs> Drink it on the street, all right. I guess we're doing that. Toshi, can you tell us what Tokyo Meltdown is? In Japan, some people drink whole night, get fucked up. <laughs> They're gonna sleep on the street. <laughs> so you go around taking pictures of people that have gotten Not go around. Out. We just, we, we can see everywhere in Tokyo. Oh, it's really here, Shinjuku. So Japan's crazy in a way that they work really hard, but they also party really, really hard as well. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> Do you shoot film? Oh, no, no, no. No? First time. No, boy. Three. <laughs> what is it to be like to be a videographer in Tokyo? What's the uh, difficulty? Carrying uh, cameras <laughs> by train. <laughs> yeah, two pericons. It's unusual to have a car in Tokyo, so you have to take a train. How do you say gimbal in Japanese? Jinbaru. Jinbaru. <laughs> Jinbaru. <laughs> what about Zachler? Oh. Zahatora. <laughs> Zahatora. What, what do you do? I'm doing video editing for TV program, NHK. The companies have like a sleeping room where you can sleep, wake up and you know, work again. Wait, you have a sleeping room at your job? It's like hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. I can't roll the film anymore, so I guess I'm finished shooting my very first roll of film. Uh, honestly, I had a ton of fun doing it. I don't even want to tell you how many of these shots I know I completely overexposed. So it's like a little needle on the side. It goes up and down based on your exposure, but you actually have to like activate it. So there's a couple of times where I'm like, eh, it's close enough that I just took it and I realized the meter wasn't on. So I'm also not 100% confident in my manual focusing skills. I will say it's so satisfying every time I take a picture, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's listen. 
like from a logical perspective it just makes so much more sense to just shoot on a digital camera but from an emotional standpoint it's like i'm way more excited to see how these photos are gonna turn out so today's gonna be rainy and gloomy so i'm not getting any like rich colors out of today anyway so i kind of want to just go ahead and just run it black and white today and i love the idea that this is just kind of like a randomized roll of film let me go ahead and start off this roll with a photo of you Anyways, I'm gonna go out for a little Tokyo outing and I think it's kind of fun that you could actually take this microphone and just slide it into the cold shoe just like that. So I think I'm just gonna go with just this. It's kind of like a photo journal vlog, maybe, I don't know. Let's see. All right, it is 5.23 a.m. on a Sunday morning. This is right outside my hotel in Shibuya. It is very lively out here. Why am I up at this hour? Well, I'm jet lagged out of my mind. I believe we get pretty good dynamic range, so I think I'm gonna go slightly overexposed just because of how much energy there is, you know? I'm enjoying this. Oh man, we have like rainbow stairs. Now realizing I'm shooting in black and white. What do you think of this format? Is it pretty boring? Because the visuals aren't changing fast enough? Or is it interesting? Because sometimes I feel like slower is better. So how many megapixels? <laughs> a, no. mi a million megapixels. Oh, this feels good though. Here's the timer right here. Self timer. In a film yeah. camera, I had no idea that film cameras have self timers. Yeah. That's like a 10 second timer it seems, yeah. probably. This is exactly like my grandfather's camera. It feels the same. I'm going to be using the Kodak Ultramax 400. 400. I've come to Osaka to join our friends Frank and Ralph. There's a guy beatboxing over there. Let me take a shot. You stand okay. over there. Don't look at the camera, brother. Don't look, Don't at, the look at the camera. Don't look at the camera? Okay. You're minding your own business. Okay, fine. Oh, damn. I already went through half the roll. <laughs> so each roll is like a, an SD card. <laughs> it actually kind of is it's one time use. I can really see the appeal of street photography. You know, it's kind of like it's an excuse to walk, which is yeah. fun, and then yeah. just observe the world around yeah. you. And so, this is Shizuoka, which is actually where my mom's side of the family is from. Huge thank you to DJI for sponsoring this episode and greenlighting this trip out here so I can come here and get in touch with my ancestry. <laughs> All right, my first time flying a drone in Japan pretty trippy just being out here like this is all so foreign to me but I feel like everyone's like a distant cousin here <laughs> for traveling my mini 4 pro kind of seems to be my go-to since I'm coming from the US going to Canada and Mexico it's just way easier if the drone is under 250 grams Japan in particular it doesn't really have that 250 gram limit as long as you register in advance but I'm trying to travel like a minimalist on this trip so I literally just have a backpack and a carry-on suitcase and that's it but if I were to do a check-in item and had more space though I probably would have come with something a little bit bigger Bigger. The benefits of the Air 3 is, of course, I have the wide angle lens like I have now, but I would also have a 3X lens, so that would make it so I could get some nice close ups. But from there, we get more serious with the Mavic 3 Pro, which has three lenses and also an aperture that you can adjust on that wide angle lens, while the Air 3 and Mini 4 have a locked iris. Flagship of these are the Mavic 3 Pro Cine, which there is a price jump, but it also records in ProRes codec, so I've been able to use it on more professional shoots like that Lexus shoot we did. Of course, we were mostly using the Inspire 3 for dual operation in full frame but when we were short on time it's awesome to be able to just throw that mavic 3 pro up and still get pro res and d-log i like how this episode is about me trying out some old vintage cameras and then all of a sudden i just cut to some of the most advanced technology where the camera flies <laughs> thanks again to dji for sponsoring this episode links in the description for my favorite drones as well as this pocket 3 and mic 2 which is kind of my ultra portable travel setup all right now we're on iso 200 and we're about to hop onto a shinkansen or i guess what you would call a bullet train it feels good to take a picture. It's like one picture at a time and you have to take your time. I yeah. like it. I loaded up ISO 200 film today and now it is dark. So now I'm stuck on this ISO 200. I think I got like six more shots left. Okay, so cool. might as well just take him slow shutter and just see what yeah. we get. I have a feeling that an eighth shutter is just gonna come out way too blurry. I don't have very steady hands. All right, so I've gone ahead and loaded up the 1600 ISO now. It makes you appreciate digital how yeah. easy it is to switch everything. I think one of the reasons why I really enjoy shooting with this camera is because it's kind of that less is more mentality, you know? I actually haven't seen any of the film developed yet. So uh, what if I go back and develop it all and it, uh, it's all just totally messed up, uh, which is definitely a possibility and that would definitely make me hate shooting on film forever. Never touch this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, I think it's part of what makes it exciting because I never get this excited or emotionally attached to photos before. Again, I'm not much of a photographer, I'm much more of a video guy. So the fact that I'm actually really excited about taking photos is uh, new to me. Honestly, my friend said, don't put this through the x-ray at the airport security. So I'll hand this to them separately and uh, get back home and process them. All right, so now I have finally made it back home with my beautiful fiance. I miss you very much. This is where you say you miss me too. 
<laughs> also got the film developed. It's cool that you get the film negatives back knowing that like this was there at that moment. So here it is, the very first photo. This I is took the first photo that film. you've ever taken on a film camera? Very underexposed. Oh, see, this oh. actually looks like in focus almost. Look at those manual focusing skills. Hey, I look, it's you. You're in that photo. What? <laughs> That's me on the bottom left right there. Yeah. What I like about these, it, I feel like it really like encapsulates the vibe. This feels very nostalgic, like photos I used to take when I was younger. And I don't know if it's the tangible aspect of it that you can like hold it or if it's just what film does. And even just like when they are out of focus, it's still funny, you know? No, it just kind of gives it character. I love all the lights and bokeh and stuff that's yeah, in the background. that's fun. There's such a richness out of these colors. Yeah, that was the Tokyo Meltdown guy we saw. I'm actually really impressed with how much detail we're able to see in those light bulbs yeah. behind her head right there. And I remember thinking like, this is just gonna be blown out the left side of the frame, but I want us to see what it mm -hmm. looks like. Mr. Frank. Frank lugged that big ass suitcase all over Japan. And on the last day, he's like, the suitcase is too big, I'm ditching it. And he left it in his hotel room. I'm actually curious about these shots because this is the higher ISO, the 1600 midnight film. But basically I didn't use it all at night. So now I just have it during the day. So I'm probably gonna see a lot of grain characteristics. Like he just has so much character. It feels like there's a story behind this. You're a film guy. I'm, yeah, I am a film guy. I just love the way it looks and the process is great. The part of the art form that is being lost. Okay. How long have you been shooting film? Like seven years. Do you develop your own film ever? Uh, I started out developing my own film. Is it, um, is it worth it or is it a pain? It depends. Because if you're in it for the art form, do it. It's so fulfilling. But there's a lot to it. Like you can, you can go all in. Like it's a, it's a deep and, rabbit hole. And I did. It feels like <laughs> FTV where it's a slippery slope. Like you take a few shots on film and you fall in love with it, and then you just go all the way down. What camera would you recommend as my next film camera? Because I, I like this. I just, I find it really hard to focus with this thing. It's super hard. I think in some of the more like pro level cameras, they have um, interchangeable focusing screens. Uh -huh. You pop the viewfinder off, you take the screen out. Nikon Fs, F2s, F3s. I know you could do that with. That's sturdy. Yeah, it feels good, huh? So this is a 1964 camera. It's like reloading a, like a bolt action rifle. I know, right? It feels like very like mechanical. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Nice. Feels very analog. All right, check it out. I think this is a super efficient setup here. We got multi-cam and three mics. Finally got the black and white photos developed. I guess they need like a different chemical, so I have to get it done at a different spot. You ever shoot like 35 mil film? No, I don't think so. It's pretty fun. Carrie's actually kind of getting into it a yeah. little bit too. Your first photo on film. I don't think I was sitting still enough though. It's okay. How, really... how did it feel? It was kind of a rush. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, usually we talk about like dogs or antiquing, and then this time she's like, I want to get a Nikon. The FM2N Year of the Dog edition. They only made 300 of these cameras. But it's like a special edition and it's like $5,000 or something. When it comes to film, I feel like cameras are cheap. Like this one was like 200 bucks or something, but then the, the film adds up pretty fast. Still cheaper than FPV. A roll is what, 10 to 15 bucks, and then processing it is another 10 to 15 bucks, and then scanning is like a few more bucks on top of that. So I feel like you're roughly about a dollar per photo. Where'd you get it developed? Did you take it somewhere online or like in person? No, there's actually a decent amount of like places that'll develop it. And actually while we were getting these shot processed, there was this lady there that had all these negatives that were like decades old and she hasn't seen these photos before. So she, she was there getting it developed. It reminds you how old this technology is. Like something that's just been around for so long, you know? Yeah. Like I've always wanted to shoot film, but it's just always been kind of expensive. I feel like a lot of people that went to film school got to shoot film? Not me. <laughs> you didn't ever shoot film in your school? My degree was specifically in television production, yeah. so that was all digital. I really got into it in the era of mini DV, and during that time, it's like, yeah, shooting on mini DV was like way more economical. Dude, I, I bet your dad has like a lot of these. I'm actually gonna go see him in a week or so, and I, I wanna just ask him about all these old cameras that he has laying around. So I wanna do a follow-up episode to this. Maybe though. we should all get like a camera from a different era. I'll get something from like, I don't know, the 20s, where you have to hold the little flash like this yeah go like oh that would be funny yeah so there's this bolex that's at the house that carrie got me your 30th birthday it was the first year we were dating and i was like i don't know how to use it but it's cool decoration i thought it was a prop this whole time i didn't know it was yeah. real Ooh, thank you but i don't know how to use it so maybe that could be another episode is us getting it to work i feel like there's a certain romance with film that I don't quite get with digital. I think it's the time and effort that it takes. But on top of that, I do think that there is a certain look that it has because while I was shooting on film, Shota had his Fujifilm, which has the film emulations, right? So it's kind of like a digital emulation of film. We took a lot of photos at the same spot. To me, like the Fujifilm's film emulation, it looked 
like digital that was trying to look like film still. Like, I feel like there's like a certain softness to film. And maybe that's just the camera and lens or whatever, but there's like a certain characteristic that I, I really like, but that might just be me trying to justify the fact that I'm spending a dollar per photo. <laughs> that's probably it too. I don't know, there's something to it that is like more than just like, artsy farsy look at me I'm shooting film but yeah I think that pretty much wraps it up for this episode but uh, let us know in the comments what you want us to explore next and film hang on who uses film we've had digital cameras for a thousand years digital Puh. no digital camera can capture the warmth and grain of good old film how can you even tell your eyes are digital cameras